Good morning. It's uh, Saturday the 16th of May 2020. The uh, lockdown is still on. A Saturday morning and um, we just had an email yesterday from someone called um, Brastink, I think it is, that asked would we uh, demonstrate the way of wiring up a cartridge, a moving magnet stereo cartridge, to play um, vertically cut records, be they cylinders or, or discs. Um, and uh, I'm uh, very glad to do so because it's a very simple process as you will see. Um, and uh, so let's uh, look at the back of some of these common cartridges. We'll be talking really about Sure cartridges and um, there's a, the, the Stanton 500 is a very common cartridge used for playing vintage stuff. And uh, anyway, let's have a look at some. Okay, this is an Audio Technica. I think it's an AT66. It was very popular long and long ago, you know, 30 odd years ago. There are plenty of them around still. Um, and it, it's got four contacts on the back, and you can see that the, there's a plus sign there. So these two are the positives, and down the bottom there's a negative sign. So these are the negatives, and L left and right is self explanatory. So uh, positive. A negative for right, positive and negative for left. Uh, easy peasy. Now we have an Autophon VMS 5E and um, it just says G at the top which is ground um, and then R for right, L for left. Um, so the top, uh, there, and you've even got pretty colours, uh, red positive, red ground, left positive, left ground. So that's easy as well. And here we have a Shure M75E J-Type 2, slightly battered, but um, it's the usual layout that Shures have on the back. At the top we've got the left channel, and then the next one down is the right channel, the next one down is LG, that's left ground, and then the uh, bottom one is right, RG, right ground. And you'll see there's a metal strip here which earths the metal case, if there be one, because they're not all got a metal case. Um, and so we, we'll need to take note of that later. But you see all these cartridges are pretty straightforward. Now this uh, only definitely applies to the Shure. The others are probably the same, but I've got no way of particularly testing it. Um, but Shure, if you've still got the little leaflet that came in the box, um, that used to tell you on that leaflet whether it still does or not, I don't know, how to wire it up for vertical cut. And it's counterintuitive. What you actually do is join, connect together, the left and right positives, the left and right signal, and take the signal from the right ground and the left ground. And that isn't what you'd expect. You'd expect it to be perhaps a bit more complicated than that, but it isn't. And, and that may apply to other cartridges, but I can't tell you that. Perhaps someone will write in and make a comment. Um, OK, so uh, let's look at a head shell with this uh, being done to it. Three. Before looking at the head shell, let's look at the business end of the pickup arm. And I'm assuming that most of us have got this kind of arm and, and the head shell that uh, you know pushes in with four contacts. Um, and it does help to know which is which in the arm, because uh, when you're looking at the underside of a head shell from the back with it upside down, it can get very confusing, or at least it does to me. So uh, looking at that arm, it's good to note that the one on the top left is the left-hand channel, the one on the top right is the right hand channel and the one at the bottom is left ground and the one on the right at the bottom is the right ground so if you uh, sketch that out on a piece of paper or make a mental note of it uh, it does make life a lot easier here's the back of our sure cartridge and we know that we must join the left and right positive channels together so that is that one and that one and we can use one of the pieces of wire in the head shell to do that we're going to take the signal from the left ground and the right ground and um, we don't forget that little metal strip we will come back to that again so join these two together and the signal comes out of there so here we are we've got our cartridge um, the right way up uh, that's the top of it and so we know that that's left and right and we've connected them together with that green lead and that leaves the left ground and right ground and um, I've, uh, and so th that's where our signal comes. We're going to connect those, those two wires in the head shell. 
And notice the red one, which I've made the sort of chief one, is the um, left ground. Now the right ground that's got the metal strip on it, that is actually going to be our ground, if you see what we mean. We've only got one signal now, positive and negative, and that this negative, this ground, is the ground of the whole cartridge, just to be on the safe side. So now we can get ready and put the uh, cartridge uh, in a head shell, and there we are. Only I'm knocking off for lunch now. See you later. OK, we've shoehorned the cartridge uh, into an old Sony head shell. And, um, and you can see here um, is our green lead, which was at the top notes at the bottom. And here is our left ground, which is red, which goes round here and into the top uh, left hand <coughs> contact. And then the earth comes round here. And I'm afraid I've mashed up the insulation a bit, but it goes onto the other pin. So we're putting our output on the left hand channel. And these two pins here there and there those are the remaining empty pins which we do not use well i um hear you saying what does it sound like and i'm sorry to say <clears throat> i haven't got a stylus that will fit that particular cartridge um it's an m75 and i have a couple of m75 generic uh, you know 78 styli but they won't fit because this m75 is in a different body so um Oh, and also, <laughs> this is a sure um, thing, you know, leaflet in the box of a cartridge, dated 2005, and it no longer tells you how to wire it for a vertical cut, so obviously people have forgotten about it, um, if, if indeed they knew that vertically cut records ever existed. Um, so, if, in case you think this thing's dissolving into a fiasco, um, it will undissolve itself again, because... The question was, how do you wire uh, a cartridge for vertical cut? Well, well, we've done that, and if you do that, it will play. But that means you've committed uh, a head shell and a, and a cartridge, and probably a stylus, to stay uh, wet, uh, for vertical. And, you know, the, the cartridges are certainly never particularly cheap, head shells and all that sort of thing, and styli certainly are expensive. Moreover, not... If you've got, supposing you've put in an 003 or an 00, whatever it is, into this, um, that might not play all vertically cut records equally well. And if you've got a variety of heads, I mean, I've got about five or six different heads and cartridges, each with its own size and type of stylus in it, you might have to try all those uh, on one particular vertical cut record to get the best results. And which you, you can't do. What you need is, let's just rephrase the question, what is the simplest way of playing a vertical cut record <coughs> using a stereo moving magnet cartridge? Well that's a slightly different question and there are two answers to it. Um, one of them I'll dismiss very briefly because it's, it's very very fiddly and hazardous and you can't guarantee uh, that it's going to work and that is to invert what you have to invert one channel now you can't uh, do that once the signal has left your record deck because it's in two twin screen leads and the negatives are connected together invariably inside the record deck so you you can't invert one of those but if you on certain types of deck you might be able to drill a hole mount a switch and connect the four tiny thin delicate wires that go along the arm and switch one of them before the negatives are joined together but that's very fiddly it's impossible to predict what what's going to happen with different machines if you start drilling holes in your record deck it will become worth less than it was before since to be fair the number of people like us that actually want to play vertically cut records is almost vanishingly small so that leaves us with one further um, simple and cheap way of doing it. In fact, it's so cheap, it's cheaper even than buying a switch to drill a hole in your record deck. So what is this great revelation? Well, I'm just going to make a cup of coffee and then I'll tell you. 
Here it is. It's a transistor. It's a 2N3904. Now, don't worry. It's not going to get dreadfully technical. In fact, it's going to stay quite simple. Take two. This is called a unity gain phase splitter, but don't worry about that at all. Here we've got a little wave coming in that represents sound coming in and it goes up and then down and then back up again, right? And that's a signal, looked like sound, for example. And it goes through this transistor. Now, when it comes out at here, at the emitter of the transistor, it's in the same phase, up, down, up up down up but if you tap off the signal from the uh, the collector here it's down up down it is indeed 180 degrees out of phase which is exactly what we want so we forget about uh, taking the signal from the emitter we take it uh, from the collector and I've zoomed in again, but it doesn't matter. And via a capacitor, a 10 microfarad capacitor, out it goes. Um, and so we've attained what we want, which is one of the channels is now 180 degrees out of phase with the other. Take 40. In order to make a thing like this, you know, it really isn't very complicated. Your auntie could probably make one for you. Um, and the, the, the actual cost of the components I worked out this morning was 70 pence. And that was only buying one of each component. I mean, normally if you buy resistors, you buy 20 or 50 of them. Uh, and then they get incredibly cheap. Um, so uh, I'll show you now uh, by a montage just how easy it is to make this little gizmo. Well, it's all over by the shouting, and um, we started at half past ten in the morning. I thought it would just be a quickie, uh, but it's now just turned six o'clock in the evening, early evening, so uh, it has developed. Um, possibly you may think too long, but I think you'll agree that if you just bear with me a little longer, what we're going to do now is uh, put this thing we made in circuit, and uh, to do that I'll, it, it's physically laid out on the bench here. Take nine. Here is the gizmo we made. Here's a little PP3 battery, runs on 9 volts. This is the input and that's the, uh, the output. Now here we've done something that you are not supposed to do. We've bought out the, the, the lead from the record deck and extended it back into our preamplifier. Okay, so now we will play a Hillendale record um, in stereo. Okay? It's a 14 inch Pathé, <coughs> slightly under that actually, uh, 1912 uh, from uh, Romeo et Juliette, uh, uh, Gounod of course, and uh, this is the uh, Ouverture et Prologue, and I, it's, I've pitched it, it's in D minor, it begins in D minor, and in 1912 the French pitch was a bit lower, that is not important right now. You will now hear it through the loudspeakers played in stereo. And if I now put it into stereo, in, sorry, into mono, the signal disappears because we're because it's 180 degrees out of phase, it cancels out. But it leaves us with a lot of horrible mush and hiss and crap. And that is what our little module hopefully will minimise. certainly a stirring piece of music, I love it. One. Uh, now I've got to work in front of the camera, uh, sorry, so uh, what I'm going to do is detach one um, channel and it's feed it through a module. Okay, so there we are. So now you see this channel, it goes straight through into the preamplifier. This channel is diverted via our 
module powered by this battery and joins it so that when we play anything now what this channel will be inverted by 180 degrees Take. and that's it what we're going to finish off with is playing the same record through uh, in the new setup and we'll let it play for about you know 15 20 seconds and then um, put it into mono because you've got to put it into mono you, you invert the one channel and then put both into mono and then that instead of eliminating instead of the the music cancelling out the noise is supposed to be I don't say totally cancelled out but much reduced and so everything hinges on this demonstration I'm sorry it's gone on a bit but I think you'll find it quite interesting and um, you know uh, if you want to make one of those devices most ordinary transistors will do and the 3904 is just one that's very common and often used today for projects in the schools and uh, you know that kind of thing okay so uh, enjoy a little bit of uh, <coughs> Gounod's uh, prologue to Romeo and Juliet thank you very much